what is the accuracy of a meter rule? Now you can able to see here the smallest the value here at the end here this is zero, then one, two, three, four, until a hundred. But then let's say there is a reading at this particular point. How do we take the reading and how do we record the reading? That is something else we'll able to talk about later on. Today I'm interested in the accuracy of different instruments that we use for measurement. Look at this case. This is 3, 3.5, this is 4. Between 3 and 3.5, there are 5 divisions. So that is a 3, 3.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 8, 9, then 4.0 so if let's say we want to take this value which is at 4 how are we supposed to represent our answer of course the measurement can be 4 but then is this how we record our value no this 4 is supposed to be recorded as 4.0 centimeter why because the smallest value which can be recorded by this uh, meter rule is 0 0.1 centimeter. This is the accuracy of a meter rule. So the meter rule cannot measure any value less than 0 0.1 centimeter accurately. Let's say sometimes you want to take a value, uh, let's say this is 3, this is 3, and this is um, 3.1. Maybe you're taking a measurement and it lies between this value. Any value that you're going to record here is going to be an approximation. For instance, you can have so between 3.0 and 3.1, we can have 3.05 centimeter. Now, when we add this, this 3.05 centimeter can either be 3.0 by truncating or 3.1 by rounding off. So either of this value 3.0 or 3.1 is acceptable if the value what you are measuring is between 3.0 and 3.1. We are not recommended to leave our answer such that the value is into two decimal place. Why? because the accuracy of a meter rule is 0 0.1 centimeter. That means it can measure up to one decimal place accurately. Let's say you're supposed to record your values, uh, values of length on a table. Probably you're measuring the length of string uh, against the time taken for maybe oscillation, the number of oscillation. And then at one point you measure some values. Do this. Ensure it is that particular point. I think it is in line. Now look at this carefully. This value here, this is 30. This is 31. This line passes between 30 and 31. Will we write it as 30.5 degrees? Will we do that? This protractor, the minimum value it can able to measure is 1 degree. But then the angle here that you are measuring is between 30 and 31. If you write it at 30, it become upon an examiner to either truncate it so that the value is 30 degrees or to round off so that it is 31 degrees. But to avoid such kind of decision, this value 30 or 31 for this case is correct. Why? Because this protractor here, this instrument measures a scale it has a level of accuracy of 1 degrees. So anything between this value, this line, so the angle between 30 and 31 is just 
but an approximation. To be added, I have made a full video of how to use a vernier scale. Today, our interest is to know what is the accuracy of this instrument. The accuracy of vernier scale of a vernier calipers is 0.01 centimeter, sometimes called the least count. This is the least measurement this instrument can able to take. That means, let's say you are taking a reading. Let's say the main scale, the main scale reading is, uh, let's say, four centimeter, four centimeter, and the vernier vernier scale is let's say 0 0.00 centimeter. So your reading here is four. Are we supposed to leave our answer as four? No. Remember, the least value or measurement that can be taken by vernier scale is 0 0.01 centimeter. It means it can measure up to two decimal place. That means our values when using a vernier scale calipers should be given into two decimal places. That means our value here or the reading here will be 4.00 centimeter. While the main scale is up to one decimal. So that will be, let's say 4.0, you add to 0 0.00, that will be 4.00 centimeter. This instrument is called micrometer screw gauge. Now, micrometer screw gauge has high level of degree of accuracy compared to other instrument that is used to measure length. That is meter rule and panic clippers. This part here, these are the jaws. This part here is movable, so this is fixed. This is movable by moving the ratchet. The ratchet. Uh, this is thimble, thimble the one that is attracting. This is the thimble, uh, which is also movable scale. So this is the thimble scale. And then this is the sleeve, so this is sleeve scale. Now, this instrument can measure between 0 to 25 millimeter. The degree of accuracy, the value it can able to measure, the least value it can able to measure is 0 0.01. Millimeter. Now, each division on this scale, each division, so one division is equal to 1 over 100 millimeter, that is 0 0.01 millimeter. We use micrometer screw gauge to get high level of accuracy. Now, when we are presenting our data, the value should be into two decimal place, and the scale, when you're using this manual, must be into two decimal place. For instance, let's say the sleeve reading, the sleeve scale reading is, let's say, 2.3 millimeter. While the thimble, the thimble scale reading, let's say, is 0 0.21 millimeters. Let's say two, 0 0.20 millimeters. We're supposed to add that is 2.30 millimeter. This zero here is very important to show the level of accuracy of our measurement. If you write 2.3, you're likely to be awarded zero when taking measurement because this micrometer screw gauge measures up to two decimal place in millimeter scale. I 
used frequently in electricity. They are very easy to identify. V from voltmeter. So there is a voltmeter and this is an ammeter. There is no way you can able to confuse which one is which. Of course we use voltmeter to measure voltage. We use ammeter to measure the current that is flowing through a circuit. Let's concentrate on the ammeter and find the degree of accuracy for this. Now this analog ammeter has two scales. There is this common value then we can always connect either on this terminal or this terminal here. The value, the maximum current when you have the two terminals is indicated here. This can measure up to 5 amps. If you connect the common and the 5 amps, that means you will be using the lower scale. The lower scale. Now, the lower scale, let's try to understand this division. Now, between 0 and 1 for the lower scale, we have 10 divisions. That means the lowest value for this is 0 0.1 amps when we are using the lower scale 0 0.1 amps any value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 is just an approximation when we are using the lower scale we are expected to give our answer into one decimal place for instance let's say the value is maybe 1.2 so our answer will be 1.2 amps let's say our value is 2 if we find that the current flowing is 2 we don't write it as that way we put 0 here because this instrument is designed when you're using the lower scale is designed to measure up to one decimal scale so this is the recommended scale. If you write 2 amps, you are likely to be awarded 0 when you are filling a table. When we connect uh, from common and 2.5 amps, we will be using the upper scale. We will be using the upper scale. Now the upper scale, there are 10 divisions which represent 0 0.5 that means each division represents so if 10 division is equal to 0 0.5 amps that means one division is equal to 0 0.5 divided by 10 which is 0 0.0 5 amps. It therefore means that when we are using the upper scale, when we are using the upper scale, our values can be recommended, can be recorded up to two decimal places. Our values can be recommended up to two decimal places. So that means uh, we can have, let's say for this case here, when recording one we can have 1.00 amps. When having, let's say 1.5, at that point 1.5, so that will be 1.50. But then let's say we have this particular point here. So each small division is 0 0.05. That means from here to here will be 1.5. Uh, 1.5 1 1.52 so it means this will be 1 so there is 1.5 uh, the two two divisions that will be 1.6 the next two divisions that will be 1.7 then this particular value here this will be 1.75 1.75 5 amperes. So it therefore means that when using this instrument, you are allowed to give your answers in two ways. That is, into one decimal place 
or to two decimal place and that is the disadvantage of using analog meters now look at this this is a digital here it's called a stopwatch i have made a whole video of how to use a stopwatch now what is the degree of accuracy of a stopwatch a stopwatch can able to measure up to 0 0.01 seconds this is the degree of accuracy of a stopwatch this value here this is 16.6 so you can able to see this is zero we have to include it when recording time so that is 16.60 centimeter a stopwatch measures for this case here this measures up to two decimal place I can't really time, uh, probably <laughs> it will be a little bit difficult, but let's say you read a value of let's say 19 you know, seconds. In terms of level of accuracy, you will be awarded zero when maybe probably you are filling a table. So we are expected to give this into two decimal place, that will be 19.00 seconds stopwatch has accuracy of 0.01 seconds and therefore the value we are recording must be into two decimal places this instrument is called a protractor used to measure the angles between lines between surfaces now let's say we want to measure this angle, I'll call it angle X, angle S, so to do that, uh